Hi, in this video what we are going to do is we are going to use the TI Inspire to help us find our p-value to make a conclusion. The situation we have here is a polling agency reports that over 60% of U.S. adults think the bank bailouts were bad for the U.S. in a random sample of 350 U.S. adults. 214 um, said the bailouts were bad. At alpha equals 0 0.01, is there enough evidence to support the claim? So we need to look for some keywords here, some things that um, help us out. Is so The first thing that we notice is that we have a proportion rather than it saying the mean of something. So this is talking about a proportion or a percentage of the U.S., which tells us that we are going to make a conclusion about the population proportion P. So the parameter that we use or most textbooks use for this is P. Um, some other textbooks use P naught or they use pi, but using pi is confusing because then you think of other things. So most of the time we just use P for the population parameter proportion. So they reported that 60% of U.S. adults think the bank bailouts were bad for the U.S. Okay, um, so in order to use the test for proportion for this, we have to take and see is n times p, so this would be our n right here, is it greater than or equal to 5, and is n times q also greater than or equal to 5. And if you remember, q is found by... Um, 1 minus p. So we would just take 1 minus 0 0.6 and we would get 0.4. So let's check these to make sure that we can even use the test. So we would have 350 times 0 0.6, um, which gives us 210, which is definitely greater than or equal to 5. And if we take 350 times q, which is again 1 minus p, which is 0.4, we end up with 140, which is also greater than or equal to 5. So this allows us to use the normal distribution to approximate the binomial distribution. Um, in some textbooks, and I would say probably most textbooks, they talk about the 10% rule. Um, because we don't really have independent, it's the probability is not the same for each person because you're taking somebody out and not putting them back in. You can't reselect them. Um, you do have to take less than 10% of the population. Um, 350 is definitely less than, um, less, uh, 10 per, or sorry, 350 is definitely less than 10% of all U.S. adults. Um, the current textbook that I teach from only talks about this one and that it has to be a random sample. Um, like I said, Always check your textbook because every time that I look at a stats textbook, the conditions are slightly different and um, some of the assumptions are slightly different. So just make sure that you refer to your textbook. Like I said, my current textbook, the only two that they reference are these two. They don't talk about the 10% rule. Um, but I know that that's popular in like AP stats um, textbooks. So with this, these are the conditions for what is known as the one proportion Z test. So that is the name of the test that we would use. So you would say since all of our assumptions and conditions are met, we can use the one proportion Z test. And after we determined what kind of test we need, we have to write our null and our alternative. Remember that the null hypothesis always has to have equality. The alternative always has to have inequality. So when you read through this, it's saying the polling agent reports that over 60%, over means that it does not include. So I would say that P is greater than 0.6. Like I said, for a one proportion Z test, you always use P and H sub zero and H sub A. Okay, so this is our claim. So we're going to see if we have enough evidence to support this claim. The null hypothesis would be that P is less than or equal to 0.6. So in order to run the test, we have to know some information. Um, if you are using the calculator, the two things that you have to know are X and N. And since we are using the Inspire, we need to know X and we need to know N. Um, X is the number of successes. So in this case, we had 214 successes. 
If they gave it to you as a percentage of the sample that said this way, you would multiply the percentage times the sample size. And then always round up to the nearest whole person. So for the calculator, this is what you need to um, use. If we were doing hand calculations and it's always important to show out work, um, we would need p hat, which is 214 over 350. This is approximately 0 0.6, um, it's like 0.611 something. I would leave it as a fraction just because of the fact that when you round, um, it creates more error and you could end up making the wrong decision. So I, it's always best just to leave it as a fraction. Um, and we already talked about what P and Q were. We already found that P is 0.6 and Q is 0.4. Those are the other things that we need for our formula. So I'll just go ahead and write them down so we remember. Um, and Q is always 1 minus P, which is 0.4. So with this, what we are going to do, like I said, is we're going to use the TI Inspire to help us make a decision for this. I'm going to wait and shade my graph until after I run it to see approximately how much I shade because I'm going to shade the p-value for this one. So what your calculator is calculating is it's taking and plugging the values into this formula where you're taking your sample proportion minus the population proportion that's being tested and dividing it by the square root of p times q divided by n. So if we plug in all those values, I'm just going to leave, like I said, p hat as 214 over 350 minus 0.6. And then we would divide this whole thing by 0.6 times 0.4 divided by the square root of the sample. We don't actually have to calculate this because the calculator will do it for us. So let me pull up the calculator. I'm going to open a calculator screen. And we're going to go to Menu and Statistics. And um, for this one, we're going to choose the stat tests. And for this one, one proportion Z test is the name of the test. So we would choose option five. P naught, remember this is what's in the null hypothesis. So the P naught is what's in the null hypothesis, which is 0.6. The number of successes. Um, like I said, if they gave it to you as a percentage for um, your sample, you would just take it and multiply it and make sure that you put it in as an integer because this is approximating a binomial distribution. Um, remember that binomial is a discrete distribution, so it has to be all whole numbers. So X does have to be a whole number. Um, for this one, it told us that there were 214 who agreed. The N is 350. And for this one, remember that we were doing, we always look at the alternative hypothesis, and the alternative hypothesis was greater. So we would select greater. And when it runs it, it gives us our Z is 0.436. So we would put that down here. And it also gave us our p-value. I will go back because I went so quickly. So remember the p-value, what it is, it's the probability of getting a sample proportion that is greater than 0.6 um, or greater than, sorry, our sample. Let me. Um, the, the probability of getting the proportion greater than 214 over 350, or you could say it's the probability of getting this area on a normal curve, the, above the 0.436. So if we go back, our p-value right here is the 0 0.33126. And notice it gives us p-hat. P-hat, like I said, they is rounded to 0 0.614429. I left it as a fraction when I plugged it in. So I get 0.33126. So when I shade that over here, I'm shading about 33% of the area, which is a lot of the area, which means that this is very common. Okay, um... A p-value of 0.3326 is very common. So we would not reject this. So this is Z of 0.436. So anytime it asks you to fill in a model, this is what they're looking for. You can either fill it in using p-values or rejection regions. But like I said, we're using a p-value decision rule for this one. Remember that the p-value, we have to compare p-value to alpha. 
So if we take our p-value of 0.33126 um, compared to our alpha, and I forgot to write that down, alpha is 0 0.01. So if we compare this to 0 0.01, which is our alpha, this is definitely greater than. And anytime your p-value is greater than alpha, you fail to reject h sub 0. So for this one, we do not have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. So essentially what we're saying is we don't have enough evidence to support the claim. So at alpha equals 0 0.01 or at 1% um, level of significance, we do not have enough evidence to support the claim that more than 60% do not feel the bank bailouts. Okay, sorry, that. let me go back up. See, this is where all of us, we forget what was the original problem. The process is so long. So let's go back up to the problem. If we go back up, it says, the claim was a polling agency reports that over 60% of U.S. adults think the bank bailouts were bad for the U.S. So we would just put that back down here. So the claim that more than 60% of U.S. adults think the bank bailouts were bad for the U.S. So just to recap, in any hypothesis test, you must first read through, find the information that you have, determine what test you need based on the conditions of that test. Always refer to your text because um, one thing I have noticed is that stats textbooks are not at all consistent. Um, so if you see things slightly different in your text, it's just because there's different interpretations. Write your null and your alternative. Calculate your test statistic for that specific um, test. And then make your conclusion. In this case, we use the p-value. If p-value is greater than alpha, we fail to reject. If p-value is less than or equal to alpha, then we would reject. As always, thanks for watching.